Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. This week I'm going to be working on another watercolor project, but to be honest I'm not 100% sure what to call it. It um, really basically started off with the idea of doing something a little different, um, meaning that I'm going to be starting by working with a rectangle and normally I work more with circles than square shapes. So. I am not 100% sure where I'm going to go with this. I have an idea in mind of maybe creating some kind of mosaic, but it's not really clear in my head at this point. And so I'm just going to do what I usually do and let it flow and see how it develops over time. One little trick I often use to deal with uncertainty and to just sort of keep going even though I'm not really sure where I'm heading or what I'm about to do is to just start somewhere. And even if I'm not 100% sure what the outcome will be, I just get going, I create lines. These lines are not necessarily gonna be permanent, that's why they're in pencil. And it's just to try and get my creative juices flowing, if you will, and that's the reason I do this. And I find it to be extremely helpful. The next thing I do is I start adding paint and I already have an idea of the palette I'll be using to start creating my painting but I also am giving myself the freedom to try something new and you'll see that I'm going to be experimenting quite a bit in this painting and it's actually quite a bit of fun because I'm making some really cool discoveries along the way and I am really excited about the painting that is about to come to life before you. I'm starting my painting process with a color called New Gamboge, and I'm not even 100% sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's a color by Daniel Smith that I really like. I haven't used it a lot just yet, but it's really bright and uh, very vibrant, and so this painting is starting off with the idea of me playing with color and playing with bright color in particular because that is when I am at my most happy when I'm painting, when I'm using bright and vibrant and bold colors and you'll see that as this painting progresses I'm going to be using a lot of those bright colors and uh, it's actually really making my heart very happy to see those br bright colors uh, mingling together and uh, yeah it's just such a happy process for me and I love you know it's just a light wash of this this color and I'm adding a little bit more pigment to it as I'm going along but it's just so bright and beautiful and uh, yeah I'm pretty excited to start off with this color it feels a little bit overwhelming right now maybe because it's you know it's yellow <laughs> It's not a, a color that people like to, to work with a lot, and, um, but you'll see that I'm going to mix a lot of different other colors with it, and it's going to tone it down a little bit, but it's still going to keep that beautiful brightness. Now I'm going to start playing with a few different hues of red, and the first one I started using here is called Quinacridone Rose. It's uh, a color that I like quite a bit. And it's, um, again, it's pretty vibrant and bright, and that's one of the reasons I am using it in this painting in particular. You'll see that as, again, as the painting continues to progress, the colors are very bold and they're very bright, and um, yeah, it just makes my heart so happy to use bright colors like this. So now I'm adding Paroli Scarlet. No, Paroli Orange. Permanent Paroli Orange. And it's either Paroli Orange or it's Pyro orange. <laughs> Not really sure how to say that word. P Y R R O L E. How would you say it? <laughs> anyway, hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, I'm mixing some oranges and some reds, and some of them have cooler tones, some of them have warmer tones, and they really play well together. As you have probably noticed, I'm working in a wet on wet way. And this means that the paper continues to be wet as I'm working with it. Um, I'm not waiting for my paint to be completely dry before I'm applying new colors. And what this does is it helps the colors blend together. 
Here I've dipped into my Quinacridone Deep Gold instead of my Nickel Azo Yellow, which I really intended to, to work with, but that's okay. Um, that Quinacridone Gold will work really well in this instance as well. Now I'm adding some Quinacridone Magenta and I wanted to add this color because at some point I want to also bring in some purple and I thought that it would be a nice sort of transition color. Here finally is my Nickel Azo Yellow and this color is so bright. I mean that new gamboge was really bright and beautiful but this color here is sort of like my go-to when i really want to use some bright yellows because it it stays bright even after it dries it remains a really bright color and i love it for that reason um, so you'll see me use it in this painting again right now it almost like feels a little overwhelming because there's a lot of it on there but you'll see in a short amount of time that I'm going to make some changes and things are going to start to shift and change and everything will all work together so please bear with me. I kind of created a little frame here and it wasn't necessarily my intention but as I was moving, moving my paintbrush along those lines uh, it picked up on some of the paint and it moved it into somewhat like a grid and and that's okay. The wonderful thing about watercolors is that as long as they're wet they're still movable and I like that you can blend them and move them like that. And while the paint is still semi-wet I can go in with a damp brush just using some water and create some more textures as I'm doing right now. I'm adding these little square shapes using just some water and my brush and I'm not really sure honestly if any of this is going to still be around when I'm done but this is a way of uh, me working through my process trying to figure out what it is I'm going to create in the end and some of those lines will actually make it <laughs> into my painting but you'll barely recognize them as such later on in my painting process. You'll see that it's so much different than it looks right now that it almost isn't recognizable as you see it. But that's the fun thing, you know, it's an intuitive painting process. I'm trying to figure things out as I go along. And as I'm moving my brush over my surface, I'm discovering things that I'm liking and things that I'm not liking so much and I'm letting my intuition guide me. So as I was using my water on and creating those little square shapes, I dropped a few uh, drops of water on the background and it created these nice little textures and I thought, oh, I actually really like that. So I then started doing this on purpose. I'm just dipping my brush in water and I'm dropping it in different parts of my painting. Some of this texture, again, will come through in the final painting. Some of it may not even look like it was ever created, but it's helping me by guiding me through my decision process for me to be doing this. After I finished creating all those textures in my background, I let my painting dry or my background dry, and then I moved forward with starting to brighten up some of the shape, the colors that you're seeing in that little rectangle that I created. The first thing I'm doing is just adding some water to the paper so that I can start dropping in a little bit more of those colors that I initially put in there. And I'm going to do it in such a way where the paints are less diluted and so they're going to be a lot more vibrant and bright. The colors I'm using in this part of my process are all the same colors that I used when I started creating my background. Now I'm starting to bring in some of that purple that I mentioned I was going to bring in earlier. And I'm doing this because it's a bit different. It plays well with the colors I already have on the paper. I'm adding it at this point also because it's a safe time to do so. If I had added the purple when the 
Nickel Azo Yellow or the New Cambodge were still wet, mixing yellow and purple like that would create a brown. And that's not really the look I'm going for here. Remember I said I wanted to have a really bright and bold and colorful painting. So I'm keeping my colors as pure as possible by making sure that the only colors that I let mingle together are the ones that play well together and that won't create neutrals and yellow and gold would create a neutral. And in this case, I do not wanna do that. So I'm making sure that I don't mix them in at the same time. If I let them mix a little bit, it will be with a buffer. Like this color here is opera pink. So I'm putting that color next to the purple because I know it's gonna play well with the purple. And then when I add a nickel easel yellow or any yellow to that, it will blend better with the opera pink than it would with the purple. So that's good. And I, I can let them do this. Um, but again, I, I don't want my nickel azo yellow to touch the purple because it's going to create colors that I don't really want for this color scheme. Another color I really love because it's so bright and vibrant is this opera pink. And I don't use it, use it very often in my paintings. I find that it almost has a very specific purpose and that purpose is usually <laughs> to fit in a bright and colorful and vibrant painting. And in this case, that's what I'm going for. So it's sort of the perfect color to blend in with the other colors. And really when you use it next to the other colors that are in the painting, I find that it plays so well with them. I let my painting dry after this last layer and then I wanted to start working on the contour again and the reason I wanted to do this after I let my paper dry is again because sometimes I don't want my colors to blend together. The color I'm applying here is that Quinacridone Deep Gold. It's a really beautiful color as well and it generally does play well with other colors, especially the colors that are in the same family that are already on my painting. But I wanted to use this color in this instance sort of as a contour and I didn't really want that contour to start blending into what I created in that, let's call it mosaic area of that little rectangle. So while, before I guess, not while, but before the paint dries, I'm using a wet brush to go in and to add some water to sort of spread that paint. And I don't know if you noticed, but at the very top right corner of my painting, as I was applying the water and uh, blending that, nick, that uh, quinacridone gold out, my paintbrush picked up a little bit of blue that was on my piece of plexiglass that I have my paper taped onto <laughs> and I actually really like the effect that created so surprise surprise that led to an idea for me to start adding some blue and look at how much it starts to shift and change the painting to just add that blue this is the new color that I was talking about in my video last week it's called I called it the wrong name last week, so I want to correct that on my video this week. Um, it's called Cobalt Blue Turquoise Light. <laughs> Hopefully I got it right this time. If I, I will definitely make sure I have it right in my video description, and I did correct it in the video description last week. But man, look at how nicely it plays with the colors that are on the paper right now. It is such a beautiful complimentary color to the colors that are on the painting and it really brings the whole entire painting to life and I, I was so excited to start adding this color that I went a little crazy with it I won't lie but I tried to you know not go too overboard with it but man I just love it and it is so bright and it covers really well this is the color uh, by Kramer Pigmente and it's, like I said before in my video last week, normally most of the paints that I've used from Kramer Pigmente, they've been mostly iridescent colors and their iridescent paints are really, really beautiful. But this color here, um, I mean, I'm super excited about it because I had another teal color and it just wasn't really cutting it for me. It didn't seem to be as bright as I wanted it to be. And this one here does not disappoint. 
So I managed to pull myself away from my new blue, at least for now. <laughs> and I'm gonna start adding a little bit more pigment to some of those other um, shapes that are in my painting. Again, I'm just using all the same colors that I used the first couple of times. It, as you'll notice, is really a building process. I am building up layers and as I'm building up these layers, the colors are becoming more intensified and they're becoming brighter and this is meeting my goal of building a bright and bold painting. And so, um, yeah, I'm just working on that right now and I'm, I'm not gonna go into too, too much detail because I'm pretty much just doing what I did before and I'm gonna just do it for one final layer this time and then we'll move on to adding some other details with my pens and markers and ink and other tools. I've decided that I want to create a little bit more dimension to my little mosaic piece. At this point, I feel like that's what it's becoming. And so I've wet the paper around the contour of that rectangle shape. And I'm now just adding a bit of neutral tint to that area. And I'm blending it with water just to, just to make sure that it's not too intense. But I do want to darken that area so that my mosaic tile, if you will, stands out a bit. Once I finished doing that, I was finally feeling satisfied with my background and so I let the background dry and now I'm going to start playing with my pens. As I mentioned in the beginning, the first few lines that I drew in pencil were just lines that I was drawing to sort of get me going and get my creative juices flowing. So you'll notice that none of the lines or maybe only some of the lines, I guess, are actually being kept. And I'm gonna be doing something quite a bit different using my pen. And I decided to do this basically at this point of the process. It's like I've mentioned before in some of my other videos, one step leads into the other step and that's how my paintings really develop. It's really, a very rare thing for me to work on an abstract painting and have a full-on plan right from the get-go. At this point in my painting process, I feel compelled to paint some of the spaces between my little mosaic rocks or mosaic tiles, if you will. And the easiest way for me to do that is to use a paintbrush because it will let me cover a little bit more area with more ink a lot faster than if I were to just use my fountain pen. I've come in with my pencil again and I'm gonna start drawing in some lines that will look like cracks. I've decided that my painting looks like a mosaic tile laying on an old wall and that old wall has some cracks and since I'm not 100% sure if this is entirely where I want to take it, I've decided to draw the lines in pencil first and if I don't like them, I can just erase them. If I do like them, then I can just trace over them with my fountain pen. Since I'm really liking how those pencil lines are looking, I'm now ready to commit and I've pulled out my fountain pen again and I'm just going to trace over the lines that I created.
I like to use stippling in my paintings because it's a neat little way, a neat and easy way, I should say, to add what looks a little bit like a shadow effect. I'll use some India ink and my dotting tool to create a bit of a similar effect but with a little bit more intense color. In previous videos, I remember having called this dotting tool a stylist. I recently have been made aware that it's actually called a stylus. <laughs> so, there's my little language lesson for the day. It was. It was a lesson for me and hopefully it can help someone else out there. <laughs> that blue looks really beautiful on the background and I think it's important for me to pull a little bit of it into my little mo mosaic tile as well. As I mentioned, this color is very rich and it covers very well. So I'm applying it and even though it's uh, a watercolor, it it applies so well over other colors. It's kind of like, you know, the gold. The gold applies equally well over other colors. And I really am loving this paint for yet another reason. Just as a little side note, I want you to know that I'm not sponsored by Kramer Pigmente to say any of this. I just really love their paints and I use them a lot in most of my paintings. So when I love a product, I talk about it and I tell you why I like it and so I, I just want you to know that yes again I'm not sponsored by Cremio Pigmente but as a segue here is another <laughs> color by Kramer that I really love and it's that star gold and again like it's it's oh it's so pretty how sparkly it is and um, it really plays well with the colors that I currently have on my paper right now Even though there are lighter values in my painting, I do feel that it would help my painting to bring in a little bit of white. So I'm going to add a little bit of white using my white pen, both inside the mosaic and on the surface of my abstract wall. And already having added it in to the little mosaic tile that I painted there, I do feel that it is helping the other colors pop. And that's a great lesson, both for me and maybe for other people who are out there. When you bring in the right values and you bring in the right color combination, they really help each other shine. So the colors, when they play well together, they make each other more vibrant. They, they help make each other stand out. And um, that's one of the things I guess that I was just trying to do with this painting is just play with a lot of color and see how well I could bring in complementary colors that would, that would play well together and that would um, help make my, my painting very vibrant. And I feel that I am succeeding. Adding white and black is definitely helpful in also helping my colors shine and, and be as bright as they can be. I've had so much fun experimenting with these colors and I'm now feeling ready to start pulling off my tape and look at the painting.
bright and bold colors just make me so very happy and I also just love seeing that star gold shimmer on the painting as well. Let's have a closer look together at some of the details. This is probably one of the longer videos I've ever posted on YouTube, but I was really struggling with cutting out parts that I felt would be useful to you. So if you stuck it out this long, I want to say a great big thanks for being patient and for continuing to watch. I hope that this video has inspired you to pull out your bright colors and to experiment and play with them because it can be such a satisfying process to bring them all together. As always, a great big thanks to you for making the time to watch. I really appreciate it and it means a lot to me. I hope you all have a wonderful week and happy creating!